Hey guys, Tanisha Coffey here, aka The Lofty Entrepreneur, and I just want to take a few moments out to show you how to get started with building your WordPress website. I'm just going to take you through some of the key areas um, of the website and of the main menu of the website and kind of show you those to get you acclimated to the basic interface. Please understand that I do have a theme already attached to this website and there are certain things here that are specific to my theme. So um, this is the main menu over here on this side. Some of the items on this menu are specific to my theme. So you won't have all of these here. Um, some of them will be similar and those are the ones that I'm going to focus on showing you. All right, so let's jump in right here. Usually when I first start a WordPress website, I will go into the settings first and I'll go into the uh, settings and I'll go ahead and edit the permalinks. Now the permalinks is how your URLs will look with your various content. I like choosing the post name version. Um, so it will say like the loftyentrepreneur.com forward slash sample post. So whatever I name the post is what will come after the slash. That's my preference. You can choose however you would like to do it. Um, this is specific to my theme right there. All right, the other thing in settings that you should know about is discussion. Discussion has to do with how people um, can interact with your blog posts. So if they're leaving comments on your website, this is where you get to decide how it's done, how many show, and all that good stuff. So you definitely want to go through here and um, change things based off of your preferences. Uh, under the reading tab over here, you can. this is where you can decide. So if your website is primarily a blog, then you're going to want to leave it like this. Your homepage displays your latest blog post. If, on the other hand, your website is, say, a, a, a retail store, then you're going to want to change it to this option where it's a static page and you would choose which page is going to be your home page. Um, I don't have any pages added to this website. Again, we're redoing it, so um, I don't have any new pages added to this website, but you would want to add a page first, whatever you want that home page to be, and I'll show you how to do that in a few moments, and then you would want to come back and select this page, all right? Or if there was a specific post that you had already written that you want to be the main home page that people always go to um, when they land on your um, basic URL, then that's what you would select that here. This allows you to choose how many blog posts show on your page. It's pretty self-explanatory. All right, under users, this is an important one. Um, users will show you who all has access to, to be able to make changes to your website. And there's different levels of those changes. Uh, your profile, you would access it here. If you wanted to add someone to your website, then you would do it here. You click add new and you would give them a username, enter all this basic information, password. And then this is important down here, the role that you want them to have. A subscriber is just simply someone who, um, basically gets notifications, say, every time you add a blog post. But these other categories are, uh, like, administrator and editor can make significant changes to your website. Um, so you want to use those cautiously. Author and contributor, if you have someone, say, writing for your website, that would be those categories. And in this case, there's a plugin on the site right now um, that allows you to create events. So you could allow somebody to be an event event contributor, but this one, again, is specific to this website because of a specific plugin I have on the website, which I'm actually not going to use, and I'll show you how to work with plugins and even delete plugins in a few minutes. Okay, so moving on, another important area is the appearance area. Um, themes is where you would go. This is a main place you would definitely want to go. So when you want to add a theme to your website, so this is all these themes are possible themes that I've found theoretically. Um, actually, WordPress will install with these three um, theme options within your 
um, website for you to choose from. Uh, it's just kind of a default. And then you can go into the WordPress repository from here. You would click right here if you want it to, when you're ready to start searching for the theme that you want to apply to your website. It's pretty simple um, interface, intuitive. You, If you want to uh, filter by certain features, you would click that. I do recommend doing that. I think you should be able to do custom colors, custom logo, and you definitely want to have some theme options. So I do suggest you use those features. Um, and if, say, I applied those features, it will pop up all of the possible um, free templates that have those options. And then from there, what you really should do is to kind of research the options and look at them. Like when I look at these, where you see the menu, that's probably the only place the menu can be. This image, that is part of the website options. How the, where these are and having icons, again, all part of the website. So pay attention to that. What you see is what you get. Um, now when you click the details and preview button, it will show you usually the, um, you know, what the main page will look like. So this is showing you um, you know what a basic blog page would look like with the image and then over here this is the important part so always you always want to read about what um, is included on this this doesn't have very much description but some of them will tell you it's mobile friendly you can do custom colors you can have all these widget areas so you want to read about these things so you know the options that you'll have for your um, website now say that this was perfect and you loved it you could click install here or you could go here and click install. Now when you click install, it will go to that section we were just in, that kind of holding place for the different themes. If I wanted to activate it, I could. If I wanted to find five more possible themes here, I could go through and I could install those as well. All right. I want to show you how to... Uh, Okay, so I just installed it. Now say that I wanted to delete it. I could click in here. This is the same screen that, let's see if it pops open. Nope, it's not there. So I will, in order to delete it, I'd want to go back to my themes. Click that button. And now I have six, and here's the theme that I just had. So I would click on theme details and now I have this option to delete it. Let me say OK and it will be gone. Alright, now I also want to go in here and show you the menu section. This is important. So remember I just talked about the main navigation of the website? Well, most websites will have only one menu option. Um, again, my theme is a little bit different. I can have multiple menus in different places. But you would go ahead and you would name the menu, whatever you want to name it. Um, there, hit Create Menu. And then over here, um, whatever pages you have already set on your site will appear here. And you can click on these pages, and when you click on them, they will appear over on this menu section. And then what you can do is you can click and drag and drop up and down to create your menu, okay? Um, that create the order for the menu, and that's how the menu will appear on the front end of your website. This is called the dashboard side where you're building. That's called the back end. The front end is the part that the public sees. Um, so that's something once you actually build your pages that you're going to want to make sure that your pages are Part of the menu. If you don't make them part of the menu, nobody can access those pages unless they have, unless you tell them a direct URL to that page. You don't put it on the menu, nobody can get to it. Okay. All right. Let's see what else. Um, oh, let's show you plugins. So, plugins are like apps on a phone. Plugins allow you to give your website specific functions. So if you want your website to be able to show your social media 
Um, so you're either either way it goes, whether you want your social media comments to show up on your website or whether you want your blog post to auto populate on on like a Facebook page, you can find plugins to do those types of things. I'm going to go to the install plugin section. So this tells you the plugins that are already a part of your site. Again, depending on your theme, you may or may not have plugins. Some some websites come with specific plugins already as part of them and then you still can go out and find additional plugins. Keep in mind that um, you know, it is possible for, you know, plugins to not work together. So be careful as you're adding plugins, be careful what you choose and be sure to research. Uh, so these are the plugins that are currently on this site. If you notice, you see deactivate on some of them and activate on others. So like this is a plugin that's in here, but it's not active. If I want to active, I have to click activate. Um, but let's go through the process of finding a, a new plugin, okay? So we can click Add New. I could have also gotten to it from here, Add New. And say I want a plugin for, I don't know, let's see what's in the favorite section. Oh, okay, so that's if you mark them as, oh, that's new. If you mark them as favorites, okay. So they'll show up there, so easy to find. All right, so Yoast SEO is a really popular one. It helps you with search engine optimization of your pages. And so um, say we wanted to ins we want to know more about it. Click more details, and um, down here it'll give you, you know, a description. You should definitely read through that. Check out how many ratings it has. Five stars, that's good. You also want to be looking at um, what versions it's compatible with of WordPress. So you, this is important. Um, last updated two weeks ago, you want things that are frequently updated. And then I like to also look at the screenshots. Check out that section so I can know what the interface is going to look like. So. Um, Yoast SEO is actually a really good plugin to add to your website. Um, it will take you longer to do your posts and pages, but guess what? You'll be search engine optimi optimizing your pages as you go, which is good. Helps people to find you on Google and helps Google to let you know that you're relevant. So if I wanted to install it, I would click install. And just like with the themes, I can click activate from here. Or I could go to my installed plugins list and do it there. I'm going to go ahead and hit activate. All right. And then it automatically takes you to your uh, plugins page. It says plugin activated. And let's see. Here it is in my list. Now, in order to do my settings, I would need to go into this and um, I would be able to set all my things for it. Now, if you notice over here, I now have this new menu option, which is SEO. Some plugins will, will create something new in this, um, in the actual menu. Others, it might be under, you know, tools or um, appearance. It just depends on the plugin where it populates. So you kind of have to look for that. And last but not least, I want to show you real quick. In order to create pages, you go to Pages and Add New. Um, same thing for Post. You do Post and Add New. And the difference between Pages and Post is that Pages are for um, static content, things that don't change, and Posts are for things that do change. All right. If you do Add New. You just type in the name of the post. You would type your post here. And then over here is where you could save your draft and where you would publish it once you are ready to actually publish it. Down here is where you can choose the post type. The different types give you different features and changes how the post looks. And down here is where you can create categories for your posts so people can easily search and find them. 
Alright guys, hopefully that helps you to get a good start. And um, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.